And here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please hit the subscribe button. Four and a half thousand subscribers. We've really jumped from four thousand to four and a half thousand, so we're going to get to five thousand real quickly. So thank you for the support we're getting from around the world. We appreciate it. Those people who have been us from, from, with us since day one. And for those of you that have been with us um, shortly, uh, briefly, thank you so much. We appreciate you. I always say that because I always appreciate, we always appreciate um, those who tune in and listen and watch um, religiously. I was talking to a, I won't mention their name. I was talking to someone who's been watching BWTM for almost seven years, seven years. Um, well, I've been doing this nine years, but seven years they've been watching and uh, they're telling me, talking to me how we've grown. They know who they are. And I've got to say thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure being in your company. And uh, yeah, I really did enjoy it. So yeah, um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. So I'm always appreciative of the people that have been supportive and the new people that are on the channel at the moment. So much to talk about. Um, so much to talk about um, from the weekend to talk about. Um, I do appreciate the live show. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, where should I start? The weekend. I think. First of all, shout to um, Liam Cameron. A second round knockout over German. I can't remember the German's first name, but uh, Liam Cameron scored a fantastic second round, spectacular knockout. It's great for him. And uh, his name will be mentioned among the top British middleweights. So that's fantastic for him. And him moving on into bigger and better fights. It's always a shame when people like fighters like Liam Cameron or Isaac Dogba, uh, they don't get the recognition from the press all the supposed boxing media until they do something spectacular, win a world title, you know, do something extraordinary for them to be supported. And then afterwards, uh, then there's this big rush, bum rush, and everyone wants to be their best buddy, but no one's there when they're doing the hard work. Nobody's there when they're, not a, few, not a lot of people are there in the beginning when they are starting their journey out. A lot of these mainstream, sorry, rephrase that a lot of these um, media people today that are around are trying to imitate others and their bad habits. Some of those have got where they just focus on, you know, the, the latest news or, 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 the, or the latest fashion. And so therefore, the people that really need to get that information, we need to know and hear about as sports fans. We don't hear about, but we see the same people on over and over and over again which is great, but, you know, uh, it's a responsibility that we cover all and everyone we can do um, in this sport, in the sport of boxing. Um, so I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll give you an example over and over and over again. Before people were talking about Keith Thurman, we followed Thurman before he became world champion. We followed him on the journey. Terence Crawford, when nobody was caring about Terence Crawford, we followed him on the journey. When uh, people weren't talking about Stavern, didn't care much about Stavern, say what you want about him, became world champion. Alexander Usyk, nobody cared about him, becomes world champion. Caleb Truax, nobody cared about him, becomes world champion. Alexander Usyk, some people knew about him, but again, became world champion. We follow these people through the journey from where they were to when they become champion. And I think that that is, I'm not trying to blow no trumpets here. I'm just saying that so many of these fighters put their lives on the line day in and day out, whether it be in the training, being the training Tyson Fury, we followed him before he became world champion to when he became world champion till after when he was world champion. It's, it's, it's that thing where you follow a fighter's journey. And um, 
I will always speak out on this. I will always speak about this. Something I've always felt very strongly about and will continue. Maybe it's because, maybe it's because of how BWTM started. A lot of people don't understand the story. And I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it just for a second. BWTM started as Bay Loric and it was a was out in the cricket field, out in or out in the field actually. And I was coaching cricket in 2009. So from sp coaching sport in 2009 to now being online TV, to to being online television station, to being on YouTube, to going back to online TV, it's a journey. There's a there's a track record from 2009 to 2018. We're still here. The ups and downs, we're still here. The breaking stories, uh, you know, we're still here. And that's that's a positive, and we're looking to grow and expand. But, um, you know, I, I just find it, it it's, it's, it's almost revolting when you see people just pay no attention to a fighter, and then they win a fight, and it's like, oh, now, great, let, 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 let's give them coverage. We should have been given coverage in the beginning. But... That's my rant and my rave over about that. So the weekend, we talked about Liam Cameron. Congratulations, Liam Cameron, getting a, a great win there. There's lots of big fights for him in the future. And I look forward to him. A guy like him who's got a, a very good defense, he's got a good chin to back that, good punching power, physically strong, works the body well, and he works hard. You can never knock a guy like that because on any given night, a guy like Liam Cameron, put with the right fighter, match the right way, much like Clinton Woods, where people dismissed Clinton Woods and didn't think much of Clinton Woods. Clinton Woods went on to become one of our most successful world champions fighting in world class. So I see a lot of that in Liam Cameron. And if he stays dedicated, as he seems to be, uh, and, see, and, and, and stays focused regardless on what the armchair fan may think, I think Liam Cameron, you know, if with the right middleweight, can fight and do well. A bit difficult with Golovkin being there, but there's no reason why Cameron at six foot one plus can't move up to super middleweight, you know, win the European Championship. If Golovkin's around, who knows? Golovkin's, what, 35, 36? You know, you don't know what will happen in a year's time or two years from now. If Golovkin retires, you just don't know what's going to happen in the middleweight division. You know, when Tyson was rampaging through the heavyweight division, nobody gave anyone a chance. And then Tyson left and the, 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 the division opened up. We looked at, we've seen it with the, uh, Vladimir Klitschko was dominating the division. Who would have said that the likes of Joseph Parker and, uh, you know, what's his name? Charles Martin. If I told you Charles Martin was going to be a world champion, you'd never believe me, but it happens shit happens in this sport so nobody nobody uh, you can write off there's always a possibility and um again congratulations to liam cameron of course another fighter we've covered on this channel and follow the journey almost from the start brian bye bye jennings or just by brian jennings doesn't like the name bye bye so i've got to stop using it bright jennings a good win of the weekend against joey dewaco it wasn't spectacular it wasn't great like to see Jennings put more combinations together. I've always said it. I think Jennings, when he puts his punches together, looks very good. Just not enough of it. But he said he was playing smart and playing safe. And and Dueco had more more to offer than he thought. Well, it looked to me like Jennings had the fight under control, and he didn't look like he slipped out of first gear. To be honest, um, there were moments I thought the fight was going to catch fire. It didn't. Um, and that was a shame, but hey, Jennings has got the win. He's still in the heavyweight rankings, and he moves on from that. So for somebody who didn't have many amateur fights, he's done pretty well as a pro for me. And um, he wasn't an Olympic gold medalist, you know. He, did, you know, so Jennings has done really well with the talent he's got. And um, I saw some adjustments in his style. Um, but, I, I, you know, I would like to see Jennings engage a little bit more, but he's always been defensively responsible. And um, I like his attitude. He's put him behind the, the conversations about Klitschko and Ortiz. They want to talk about, oh, Klitschko and Ortiz, Klitschko and Ortiz. You've got to move on from that. And he's got the right attitude. He's moving on. It was at four fights. Now he's unbeaten since coming back. 
So it's all about building your confidence up. And why didn't he fight the big, the best fighters in the world? We well, need to build your confidence up. So he's doing the right thing and he's doing the wise thing, which is getting it. Well, the very unwise thing he did was getting with Ortiz as soon as he lost to Pitchko. It was a bad move. I didn't think it was great, but he did it nonetheless. So it's good to see that he is now continue to get himself in the mix, beats Joey DeWaco, and you move on. So well done, Bryant Jennings. Of course, the main event, Isaac Dugba, our boy. Isaac Dugba has gone on and become world champion. It did look great in the first round, him getting knocked down. But uh, Paul Dugba, we've got to give massive shout out to Paul Dugba. I can tell you something now. Having watched so many fighters from the UK go across to America and fall flat on their face, one of the main reasons why fighters fall flat in their face from the UK is because they step up and they can't make adjustments. They cannot make adjustments. Dugba got caught hard in the first round by a puncher in Jesse Magdaleno, right? Jack Magdaleno is a good puncher, very good puncher, and he dropped uh, Dogba. That's probably the hardest Dogba's been hit in his career. But it showed the heart of a line for him to get back up and to get his feet from under him and then to come back, make the adjustment in round five to land a corking right hand. And uh, I think if anyone listens to the commentary, I almost broke the fight down as to what Dogba had to do to win the fight and what he had to do. What I was saying when Dogba was fighting Magdaleno, he had to let Magdaleno commit, let Magdaleno throw the left hand and then hit him with the right hand, which is basically get yourself in position, let Magdalena throw, and then land your own, which is what caused the knockdown and ultimately brought an end to Magdalena. Uh, it was a great fight. Um, so uh, Britain and Ghana have a new world champion, and his name is Isaac Dog by the Royal Storm. We'll be looking forward to speaking to him shortly um, to hear his thoughts on the fight, the knockdown, the comeback. Him and his father did a great job to go to america and to to rip the title away from jesse magdaleno a champion that you know uh when dogba went down that first round many would have said that dogba wasn't going to get up and uh you know a lot of people had their hand even i was commentating the first round i was like oh my god just get through the end of this first round he didn't do anything reckless tried rushing in again but they were able to change up make the game plan make the changes which is what a lot of british fighters can't do or a lot of fighters generally not just british fighters when they get to the elite level, they can't make the adjustment. And so he was able to make the adjustment, which was great. And, you know, congratulations to Dogba, the Dogba team, and uh, Dogba, and they move on to bigger and better things. Um, you know, as Zuma Nelson warned Dogba that after this fight, that everyone's going to be targeting him. And of course they would. Uh, did you see Katie Taylor on weekend? No, I didn't. Sorry, I, I've got to be honest. I didn't watch Katie Taylor, and I'm just being honest. I didn't watch her. Sorry, I'll have to go and look at that fight and see what it did. But congratulations to Katie Taylor, now uh, unified champion. Congratulations to her as well. Um, so those are the two fights that happened there. Then we had Danny. Then we had um, Jerome M Big Baby Miller. Uh, I'm gonna rename Big Baby Miller to Big Bully Miller, because that's what it seems like to me. Big Bully Miller. Um, my assessment of Big Bully Miller is that he's big, he's way too, he's, he weighs way too much, um, 300 plus pounds, not great. But he seems to be able to go the distance, which is fine with him. He's not a one-punch knockout artist at world level. Um, and I've said it before, when he throws punches, he seems to be looking at the floor before he throws his punches. The other thing with Miller is he's got this annoying habit when he backs up, he leaves the side of his face open. So he's open to overhand right against a good puncher. He's going to get nailed cleanly. And when we push Miller back, he looks very uncomfortable. Miller's great when he comes forward and throwing in big bombs and stuff. Well, not great. He looks sloppy. But a guy who's able to got a good jab, can put a good jab at Miller and has a nice right hand that can tie Miller, is going to catch him on his temple. And the legs are going to go from under Miller. I don't care how good a chin Miller may have. And I've, I saw him get rocked by, oh, I keep talking about, it. I see him every time. The last fight he was in, not this fight he fought against Duhapas, the fight before. And if Duhapas was any real puncher, if Duhapas was a real puncher, Miller would have been out of there. I don't rate Miller. But this comes to the next point. 
that it looks like we're going to see, well, it looks that the plan is for Joshua to fight Miller in Brooklyn. Now, here's where I bring in that information I've heard again. Again, rumour mill, but the rumour mill says this, and the rumour mill comes from, um, well, I'm not going to say it comes from, two rumour mills. Rumour mill number one says that the main uh, stumbling block in negotiations is because of Joshua's promoter and that Wild Camp Team Wilder wanted, wanted to talk directly to Anthony Joshua. That's one of the things, and that the promoter is a problem. Is it true? I don't know. I'm not at the negotiating table. Now, this same source told me that in two weeks' time, there's going to be an announcement by Matchroom announcing this fight between Wilder and Joshua. Again, it's speculation. It's rumour. I'm not putting my name to that, but I'm just telling you things I'm hearing. The other thing I'm hearing, and this thing is interesting, Hearn or Matchroom Sports or Matchroom USA are going to be doing, and I said this on my Twitter earlier on, they're going to be promoting a fight every month in the USA. So every month they'll be promoting a fight or a card in the USA every month. And that's every month in the USA and in the UK. So imagine how many how many cards that is a year. And imagine now if you are Al Heyman fighter. Just, just, just imagine. There is a strong possibility then that disgruntled fighters from the Al Heyman camp would want to sign with Hearn or sign with Matchroom. You see, now imagine. is oh wow people have just exploded here wow sorry I'll, I'll finish what i'm saying then i'll get back come back i didn't see you all in the room my apologies um yeah so imagine disgruntled fighters leaving Heyman and coming to matchroom which comes to the point which comes to another point people say that hearn is the biggest boxing promoter in europe but Heyman is the main man in boxing. Now, question, what determines who the best promoter is? Is it determined by the stable, the fighter, the amount of pay-per-views per year, the amount of money and gates and sold out venues? What makes the best promoter? Does the best promoter mean the best fights? Which must mean the best fighters being involved? Does that make the best promoter? What made Don King such a great promoter? And they said he was the number one promoter in the world. And how far are the likes of people like Eddie Hearn? And where does Bob Aaron come into this? So where does Golden Boy fit? Just questions. And then Sauland, they've got a great series going on, the World Boxing Super Series. Where does Salons come into that? Where, where do they fit? So how do you rank the best promoter in the world? Joshua may be the biggest draw in boxing because he's a heavyweight. He may be, but he might not be the best fighter in the world. You, you, you understand that? He may be the best. He may be the biggest draw. He may be the biggest draw. You arguably is the biggest draw. But he might not be the best fighter. But he might have that exposure because he's with Matchroom because they've got Sky. I don't know. But there are rumours there are certain fighters that um, they're looking to sign. But check this out. Imagine if Wilder, one of the sticking points in negotiation for Joshua Wilder is that Wilder joins Matchroom. If Wilder joined Matchroom, then whether Joshua wins or Joshua loses, it only loses to a matchroom fighter. So the whole in-house thing, like how... So if, for example, Joshua were to say, you know what, I don't want to be at my matchroom anymore, 
and Wilder is there in that camp, then they've got Deontay Wilder there, one of the biggest punch, if not the biggest puncher in world heavyweight boxing at this present time. And they'll make money off of Wilder. I mean, I'm just thinking, keeping it in-house. So if Big Baby Miller were to beat Joshua, they can instill the rematch. They got the guy in-house. Just thinking. Top rank did it well. Remember when Pacquiao had that series where he fought Bradley three times and then he fought um, Cotto and he fought a few other guys, but they were all in-house fighters. Is Matchroom USA looking to get an in-house crowd? Al Heyman has the in-house crowd. He's got Spence, he's got Thurman, he's got Porter. You know, so in-house crowd. So you have in-house fights and in-house championships. If you get what I'm saying, or in-house championships being like, uh, you know, uh, Thurman could fight Spence, but it's an in-house fight, meaning that it's under the same promotional banner. So it's interesting stuff. It will be very interesting to see how that works out in the future. So, um, Mark, uh, Big Bully Miller says, watching boxing. <laughs> what a name. These names are getting better every time, watching boxing. Mark Smith says, Mr. Trick and Grim, the woman is quality. Yeah, she's good. She's good. Uh, what's her name again? Uh, Jessica Mas Mas Maskill. I like Maskill. I like her a lot. Miller, a Chisora 2.0. My oh dear. That's a point. Yeah, I, I, I do see that there. But I actually, I think if I were if I were marking anything, if I had to delay Wilder versus Joshua then I would get Big Baby Miller and fight Dillian White. Let them two fight, right? Put them to one side, let them fight it out. And let, or let Wilder fight White and let Joshua fight Miller in Brooklyn. So people get to see more of Deontay Wilder in the UK against a UK fighter. And people get to see the first time of Joshua in the US against Miller. So, interesting. I don't like Miller's style for Joshua because he just wings. He's just a winger. Like, he just comes forward and just throws punches from all sorts of angles. Joshua's going to have to stop him in his tracks early with a nice hard jab. Don't like his style for Joshua at all. But anyway, Emilia's average, very average in my opinion. I agree. Uh, Ronnie Emerson says, thank you. I've been saying that he's a super, heavy, a super heavyweight with cruiserweight power. He is. He is. Thank you for that, Ronnie. Can't see Joshua fight Miller next. Think it's Joshua versus Povetkin. Wilder, uh, Wilder is just looking for excuses, in my opinion. Well, on to that point. If Joshua wait to vacate a title, to let um, vacate a title, Povetkin versus White or White versus whatever, then that sets up a nice fight in the future for Joshua versus Dillian White too for a world title fight. In house again, you see. Uh, oh, what happened with you and Russell Hartley? I heard you got struck off for being expensive with your wife and not having legit sources. Uh, don't shoot the messenger, just asking you man to man. Peace, dude. I'm not even, I don't even think that is even worth ear time sorry man to man it's not even worth ear time um if that's what he says and you want to believe it believe it but uh stuck off hmm i've been doing this since 2009 it's 2018 stuck off you can't strike you can't strike off something that you ain't the boss of I don't understand strike off. I don't get that. I don't understand that. But anyway, so um, messenger, whatever. I, and um, but um, um, yeah, it's um, if 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 um, 
How do I answer this? Source is not legit. Um, I think my work speaks for itself. And um, too expensive. It's value in it. So it's whether people value you or not. I, I can't I can't answer that one way or the other. And I'm not interested. It's not it's not important. It really isn't. Not a big thing. Let's talk about let's talk about things that really matter in the world. Um Miller beats White. Yeah, I think he was possibly. Having the best stable, quite possibly. Uh, Miller shit beat two pensioners in his last two fights. They could hardly walk, never mind fight. I know a lot of Miller, Miller's getting a lot of heat for the sort of fighters he's fighting. I agree with you there, Show. So, yeah. Uh, Heyman doesn't promote, he's an advisor. Yeah, that's a nice, tactful thing that Heyman does there. Uh, just tune in. Have I missed any hot topics? Not yet. Uh, hot topics, no. Interesting topics, yes, but hot, no. Um, don't do gossip. So there we go. Uh, Hearn says, Wilder fight happened next. How exactly? Well, according to what I'm hearing, the fight is going to be announced next in two weeks. But who knows? Mikey Garcia is the best fighter. Well, I think Crawford may have an answer, may have an argument. That I remember when, when I interviewed Crawford, I think it's the first interview I did with him. He talked about the fight he had against Mikey Garcia. He told me, they fought Garcia three times. He said he beat... He, I'm sure he told me he fought... I wasn't sure if he said Mikey Garcia or Danny Garcia. I wasn't tell, sure which one he was. I'm going to have to go back and listen to the interview. But he did say he fought Garcia three times. Twitter going off. He did say he fought uh, 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 three times. He fought Garcia three times in my um, thing. Three times. And he said that he fought Garcia three times in the amateurs. Bloody hell. Um, he he uh, fought Garcia three times in the amateurs. He says that he beat Garcia in one fight, and then the two other fights that Garcia won against him were de debatable decisions. He said so. That's what Crawford was saying in the interview. The Crawford told me this before he fought Ricky Burns. Uh, Heyman also has the WC in his pocket. Okay, probably has. Uh, Miller will beat White up. Uh, beat beat white up miller has a great chin if crow crop couldn't ko miller with clean head headlocks aj won't ko him either ellen has got a dopey in his pocket so what you say i don't know uh, russell hartley's up okay well i'm not interested you know what i mean i'm not interested in what i don't to be honest let me get something straight here i don't care what anybody's got to say about me i really don't care i really don't care because I'm not studying what anyone else got to say. I'm focused on what we got to do. We've been there since 2009. You check our track record. You check our track history. That's it. 2009. We're here. Um, Errol Spence is the best. Ask Brooke. Well, that's probably true there. Probably true. Now, um, other things I want to talk about. So we talked about Matchroom. Them going to America and taking over or doing their thing. I don't think Matthew can take over straight away, but what will give them a jump start is fighters leaving Heyman and going to Matchroom. That will be exciting stuff if fighters leave Heyman and go to Matchroom. So guys who already established signed for Matchroom. It's almost like um, how it works. You're not building guys up from scratch. You're taking guys that are more or less the finished product and working with them. Good business sense. You know what you got, a proven product and commodity with certain fighters. So they know how to promote. And they know how to do what they've got to do. So we'll see. We'll see. So there we go with that. Um, let's talk Hey Bellew 2. We may as well. Um, I wonder, they say rematches. Eddie will sign the Charlos soon. Well, that'd be something. That'd be something if he did sign the Charlos. They are, they see the Charlos, the realism and the Charlos are the way that they are because, again, media don't want to cover them. 
for whatever reason, media don't want to cover them. So they've said, you know what? We're not going to wait for you to cover us. We're going to make our own moves and we're going to say shout our own things. Because every time the media was covering them, it was always negative coverage. That's why the Charles switched up. So I understand the Charlos. I understand where they're coming from. And, uh, you know, it's always easier to understand another person's pain if you felt it yourself or feeling yourself or being affected by it. You know, so there are different reasons why people won't cover certain fighters. Some of it is because it's not good for their network, but they'll cover other fighters that talk more garbage and do more things. So there's a lot of contradiction there and political crap that's going on. Ultimately, I think that the Charles are doing what they need to do. The, the, the middleweight Charles just put on another destructive performance. Good luck. Just keep doing what you're doing. But, you know, when the big fights come, when the major fights come, then, you know, that's why I want to see a Charla fight, Danny Jacobs, who to me looks vulnerable. Look good, but I'd like to, I'd, I'd love to see Charla versus Jacobs made next. I think it's a great fight to be made. Uh, I went to the Hey Belly fight and was shouting for Belly. So why am I wanting Hey to win this time to Stephanie Hopkins? Maybe some people are sick and tired of hearing Tony Bellew yap on and on and on and on and on. And on. Bellew says this, Bellew says that, Bellew says, Bellew's a spokesperson for the world at the moment. Everything he's saying, you know, um, so why not? If, if he wants to, if he's got an opinion, let him have that opinion. Um, the thing is, this fight reminds me very much of um, Groves Froch 2 in Hayes' demeanour. You know, staying cool and calm, not being rattled, psychologically in a better place. And Belly still using a lot of energy, trying to mentally get to Hay, trying to open him up, trying to open him up. And Hay's smiling and taking it cool and calm. So, just a quick thought. If your sources are legit, what happened was gospel. There's no smoke without fire. So, one point, one source, one story. We've been around how long? Okay, look, if you don't think our sources are legit, just don't tune in. Please, don't tune in. You bring up one thing, it proves. So, in what? So, you're telling me that BBC, ITV, Channel 4, or any mainstream media coverage in the world has never had a source that's not been correct. Is that what you're sitting here and telling me? You know what I mean? So don't hate, don't be hating. Just if you don't like it, find something else to do. And you know what? You can't knock off person trying to find out the truth. That was one situation. One situation. So what? Big deal. Get over it. And if you don't like it, unsubscribe and go somewhere else. I'm not bothered about it. So you seem bothered about it. So fine. But I'm um, not interested. Really not interested. I know, I know, I know. We've got a troll in the room. I know, I know. But, um, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm not bothered. Not bothered in this slightest. Not interested. Not interested. You know, um, people know we've got trolls in the room. Jealousy. That's all it is. So I didn't worry about it. I'm not bothered in the slightest. So back to my point in saying, I'll stay on track. Hey, Bell, you too, is a very interesting fight because... There are so many different things. Ishma Shalat, Salas is a very interesting character. And I'll say this much. If you go back and watch when on Haymaker's show with that young girl who's making a professional debut. Uh, the the, the, the Bellew, um, what's it? Yeah. Well, if you watch when Hay was Hay had that show with that girl who made the debut, and you listen to Ishmael Salas in the corner, like she's boxing and heads like this. Hey, it's been rocked back all the time. And Sally goes back to the corner. Salas says, You're doing good, you're doing good. It's use left hook, you're doing good. And I'm thinking. That girl's getting her head rocked back, left, right, and center. 
every time she's getting a head jab back, she's getting caught with right hand, she's getting caught with every punch in the book. Salas has said nothing to her about it. Now, was he just trying to, I don't know, give her confidence? But if you go back and look at that tape again, I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? So is he doing it to, to appease and make Hay happy? Was he trying to just butter this girl's confidence up? What the hell was that girl doing on the show? And more to the point, what the hell was Salas talking about? If this is the same Ishmael Salas that's training David Hay and saying, oh, David's in great shape and David is this and David is that, is Ishmael Salas a spokesperson for David Hay? Or is he actually, I know he's created champions. That's fine. I'm not I'm not knocking Salas' um, what he's achieved. But for this particular situation and this particular relationship, he did make a statement. There's nothing more I can teach David Hay. Is that there's nothing more I can teach David Hay because he's got his own plan and game plan of what he needs to do? Or is there, I don't have much more to teach David Hay because I generally, as a trainer, have got nothing much more to teach Hay. So that's interesting how that camp works and how I'd love to be able to get in camp, but just having that time to get into camp to find out what is what. You know, so it's an interesting, it's an interesting mix there with, with that situation with Salas and, and Hay. Now, if we go back to the McGuigan situation, well, it was all going great in camp and he was in the best shape. He was 2.0 or 3.0 or 5.0 or whatever zero. Hay is a tremendous salesperson. Hay, I'm not being I'm not being disrespectful. Hay could be a politician. He could be a politician. Hay could tell you shit is gold and you believe it. Shit is gold and you believe it. Because he speaks in such a way, such confidence. He makes for a great promoter, David Hay. One when his career is done and gone, he's going to make for a great promoter because he can sell bullshit. And if he can sell bullshit, you'll make a great promoter. Which leads me to my next point. And I'm going to come back to the hay belly thing in a minute, but I'm just trying to talk about promoters. I asked myself this question across Twitter. Do you love the promoter? Or do you love the fighters? Do you support the promoter or do you support the fighters? Because it seems to me that boxing fans are more focused on what the promoter has to say than the actual fighters themselves, which can't be right. The promoter promotes the fight, the fighters do the fighting. That, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, I understand the promoter's a personality, great. But it's the fighters that matter. But when you've got more time focused on the promoter than you do the fighters, that's a bit of a head scratch for me. I don't understand that. You know, and I, I, I you know, that's a that's a problem. You know, and then when people take what the promoter says as genuine and honest and the truth all the time, got to remember they're trying to sell fights to you. Oh, he said this and he said that. You take it as gospel. I don't take it as gospel. I take it as a promoter who's trying to sell certain things. So, you know, so uh, four X junkie says, I'm interested in the action ring. I totally agree with you there. Totally agree. You see, so what can happen is, and I'm, what can happen is the promoter can sell your bullshit fights on pay per view and you buy it. Because remember, People buy people. They don't buy products. You know, like, you buy something because somebody may have recommended it to you. You buy something where you, go, you shop at a certain shop because you've got a good relationship with that person. You buy something with the shop because, you know, um, somebody else has referred it to you. So, you know, you, people buy people. And if you don't, have, if you go into a shop and you don't get good customer service, what do you say? I flip in shopping here again because that person's giving me shit. Customer service. That's how it works. So people buy people. So people have bought into Hearn, who's doing a tremendous job doing what he does. A lot of people say I'm anti-Hearn, but they haven't got a clue. 
or anti-match. I'm not. I just think I'm anti-bullshit. There's a difference. And that's not just with her. It's with anybody. Anti-bullshit. Don't sell me something that is... Don't tell me somebody's world class and they've never fought, you know, in the, in the top 10. And they've never fought in the top 20. Don't tell me somebody's world class and the last 10 guys they fought, you know, they've all had 10 losses in each one of those last 10 fights. Don't tell me they're world class. Don't. I don't want to hear that. So, you know, it's just... So the power of social media is incredible. And, and that's to that point. Now, back to Hay versus Bellew. A lot of the things you need to think about. Hay 37 or 38, coming up 38 soon this year, I think. Well, anyway, what's one of the reasons why David Hay was unable to knock out Tony Bellew? Or it's because of the shoulder injury and the fact that he cannot rotate his shoulder the way he wants to and can't get maximum amount of power in these punches? Question. Only a question. Because I go back to Keith Thurman, who... Again, a guy that we followed all the way up to being world champion, Keith One Time Thurman. There was once upon a time where Keith Thurman was knocking guys out and they all stopped. And I was talking about this the other day, um, that he's been injured. And since the injury, his shoulder hasn't been the same and he hasn't caused these knockouts. Not dropped guys, but never knocked anyone out. So people say, oh, well, he's moved up in competition. He's also been injured a hell of a lot as well. So the injury that showed Hay got to his shoulder. Now, is that was that a problem there? The other thing is, did Hay rush back too soon when he fought Bellew the first time? Whatever happens now, Hay, I think, will be better than he was before. You know, Bellew comes into the fight knowing that he has won the first fight. But a lot of people say, well, you couldn't knock him out when you had only had one leg. You know, if and the other thing is, if Hay was injured coming into the fight, remember he was meant to go off to see a doctor before the fight and all this stuff. He was flying off to see his doctor and he ignored all the eight people said, oh, it weren't true. But he was injured. We knew going into the fight that there was something wrong with Hay. But what we didn't know it was then the Achilles went. If you remember me going back, track back to what I said again, we'll go back to this legitimate sources thing. If you go back in time. And these are for people who have been with Baylor for years before he became BWTM. I said David Hay versus um, Tyson Fury wouldn't happen. And I said it's probably because he got beat up in sparring by Deontay Wilder. Go back and check the tape. Go back and check it. And they gave him a nick over the eye for the first fight. So he got concussed by Wilder. Stories now coming out now that Wilder beat Hay up in sparring. Yeah. Who's full of shit now? So now this situation here with Hay and Bellew, like I said, Bellew to me is a guy that's doing a lot of talking, talking, talking. And this time Hay's cool and calm and relaxed. I hope that that, I hope I'm, you know, I could be reading this all wrong, but talking all that talk all the time, still trying to get into a man's mind. And he's like, yeah, whatever. It reminds me of, of, of Groves Frotch 2, where Groves was in Frotch's mind. And then remember the handshake? That's where I felt Groves lost the fight. That handshake. Where Frotch pulled him towards him. So we're all gonna have push and pull. Bill saying oh, it's a bit of a laugh, but at that point, Groves realized I'm not getting inside this guy's head. I'm not getting inside this guy's head. And I like the way Belly talks. I love the way he talks. He's like, yeah, I'm going to knock you out, but he's the most, he's a dangerous fighter. I'm going to win this fight, but he could knock me out of one shot. So it's kind of like, leaves the, leaves the door open just in case he does get knocked out. Well, I did tell you that he was a big puncher. Yeah, just, just in case, just in case. You know, uh, hey, on the other hand, saying, you know what? You don't have the punching power to knock me out. I'm going to knock you out. So it's quite interesting listening to those two. So loads of people talking. Let's see what people are saying in the room. Let's get what people are saying in the room. I love listening to what people got to say. Hay needs to destroy Belly to set up a Joshua fight. Can people actually see David Hay fighting Anthony Joshua? Do you know what? Oh, 
I was going to say something, but I probably won't say it in a minute. So, um, her has more fans than AJ. I'm only interested in action in the ring, says four junkies. AJ boring as <laughs> no promote is more entertaining than Fury. <laughs> You're spot on, bro. Um, night at, at night, but what does this that mean? Uh, box watch TV, Nightbot. What do I tell you about Nightbot? Nightbot is a automatic system that is within that I've programmed into YouTube to stop trolls from swearing and caps locking and stuff. So it's just a automated uh, troll blocker. That's what it basically does. That's all it is. So that's what it is, basically. So that, that's all it is. Uh, Nightbot was put in there before because people have been swearing all the time and just having no respect for the channel. So you just put Nightbot on there. That's all it was. So, uh, yeah. Um, Canton Us Collar says, seems the majority love Eddie Boy and buy his nonsense because he's constantly shoved down our throats. He's targeting that audience through social media to sell pay-per-view like the weekend, this weekend's pantomime. Well, there you go. I'm glad you see it. If you're not anti action, why do you really interview any action reaction fires or on a regular basis like you do with other people on the channel? Well, let's put a few things straight first and foremost to clarify a few things. First of all, BWTM Sports is not a UK brand. It's a US brand. So I want to clarify that first. Secondly, I don't go to press conferences. I, I just don't go to press conferences. And I've proven uh, on more than one occasion that um, at this stage, for me, I'm not interested in press conferences. Just got no interest. So if you ask me that, well, I don't do matchroom fighters. I don't do uh, Box Nation fighters. It's not because I don't do them. Um, but hey, you say that. But hmm, Luke Watkin is fighting on June the 6th against um, Lawrence Acoli. We've already interviewed Luke Watkin. So it's not an, it's not an anti thing. Um, uh, Carl, uh, what's he? Um, Jones, Carson Jones, for the other day against uh, Ted Cheeseman at the press conference was there because I was following Carson Jones. So it's not this thing I'm anti match room, but listen, do I have to do what people want me to do? Do I do I have to do everything the same way because ten people are doing it? I must do it this way? No, I just it's just I don't do press conferences. Personally, don't do press conferences. It's not to say in the future that press conferences we will not attend, but tell me, if 20 people are going to press conferences and 20 people are... See, one of the things that people don't understand about press conferences is this. Check the press conferences and the interviews that do at press conferences and how long do they last? And then you tell me, if I can get Abel Sanchez, I can get Spence's trainer, I can get Peter Fury, I can get Huey Fury, I can get... Probably get Tyson. I can get, there's a lot of people I can get, but May Severn. If I can get it, Isaac Dobber and all these other fighters, what's the problem? What's the problem? I don't, I don't understand. I mean, yes, I'm sure you want that content, and maybe in the future that's something we'll look at. But Jimmy, that's all I can say to that. It's not a, it's not an anti matchroom thing, or it's not anti matchroom. It's all anti box nation. It is what it is. That's it. So there's your answer to that. I think if Fury wins, then he'll look for an early fight with... Uh, if Hay wins, he'll look for an early fight with Fury before Tyson Fury gets fully back into shape. AJ and Wilder will be too big a risk. I think the Fury fight will be easier, but still big money. Mm, I don't think Hay will ever fight Fury, and I don't think Fury will ever fight Hay. I just don't think that fight will ever happen. Um, I think Hay will look for the biggest money possible to get out and get out. So, yeah, I don't, I really don't, can't see it happening. Uh, Canton Arcola says, point being, in the old days, a promoter was just a bloke getting up, setting up the fight, not some sort of icon who loves the camera uh, to better his business. It's a new area and we're all just, I totally agree with you. Uh, Money, Money Man says, levels went up on Keith. Um, yeah, no, he dropped, Bandu, he dropped, but then... Spence went and destroyed Bundu afters, but that the time period Bundu wasn't doing anything inactive, older fighter. 
Um, so he dropped uh what's his name? Guerrero. Did well. I think I think Keith's a very good fighter. Uh finally a YouTuber that sees what I see in Hay. Hay during his comeback can't throw straight punches anymore. There you go. Razor blade job. Well, Ingram, what does each fight need to do to win? Well, well, first thing, uh, David Hay has got to understand this is boxing and he's not a fast bowler. I think he's got to get a lot more feints from Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew, to me, is his punch. He, 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 the amount of times I watch Tony Bellew fight, he does the same thing all the time. He misses with that right hand so many times. Oh, my God. He's the, probably one of the most inaccurate punchers in world boxing today. He is. I mean, that, if you look at a right hand, now he'll probably go out and throw a cork of a right hand now come Saturday night and make me look like a complete fool. So I probably shouldn't have said that. But, um, yeah, he's not an accurate fighter. He's not off with his right hand. He's not accurate at all. He misses a lot of shots. Um, so for me, I'd like to see David throw lots more, lots more feints. I want to see David go back to how he fought the likes of uh, Ruiz. But remember, the problem with David Hayes, he's a reflex fighter. Speed and reflexes. So, like, the shot that he knocked Ruiz down, a beautiful shot he knocked Ruiz down, speed and power. Like, when he fought Chisora, speed and power. Reflexes. Has Hay got those reflexes? Once those reflexes have gone in you, like someone like David Hayes, unorthodox, you're screwed. And David Hay now is learned, he's trying to learn how to box. Under all those years he was on the booth, he never learned how to get on the inside properly. See what I mean? You remember the Klitschko fight? Manny Stewart said because Hay's legs were so wide apart, he just stuck a jab on him. He stuck a jab on Hay because his white legs are so wide apart. He's always got to put his legs back together to reset. And that's why Manny Stewart said he'd close Hay down easy and stop him from throwing them power shots. Because Hay was so wide, his legs were so wide apart. He had to bring his legs back together to throw a shot. And he, he told Vladimir, just put the jab on him. So, you know, he broke him down by just throwing a jab. So, Hay's got to use lots of feints against Bellew. Lots of feints. And he's got to be counter-punching his fight. He's got to use his speed. And he's got to counter-punch Tony Bellew. That's what I think. For Bellew, he has got to put the take the fight to Hay and push him into another dogfight and take him late. Take him late. Because if Hay's got stamina issues and the body's going to break down, it'll be later on. So I think you take Hay late. Put the pressure on Hay. But you've got to be careful when you put pressure on Hay because Hay can count and land that right hand. Um, Betty has been active for 40 months. Come fight night. Very smart move from Hay, I think. Very smart. Very, very smart. I see Hay uh, Belly winning the game. I think it's a totally different fight. I think it's a totally different fight to the first fight. Totally different fight. In fact, it's Hay Belly one, Mark two. So it's a different fight. I think it's two different fighters going in there now. The inactivity. Belly maybe believing he's better than he actually is, and Hay needing to make improvements. So um, his. Uh, I, I, his confidence is way up. Yeah, conf his confidence is up, Belly, and you can't blame him for that. Um, he's a better boxer than Hay. I've never thought Hay was a boxer. Never, ever have I thought Hay is a boxer. A boxer is the type of guy that I could say is a guy that dictates behind a jab. Oh, you never, you never hear somebody say, oh, Hay's dictating this fight behind the jab. You won't hear that. You hear Hay with big power shots. He's, he's what I call a sniper, um, a, 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 um, a sharpshooter. That's what David who is a sharpshooter, but he's not a boxer. Different styles: boxer, slugger, sharpshooter, dancer, uh, switch hitter. He's a sharpshooter. I don't know how sharp he is now at thirty-seven, but he's a sharpshooter. Hayes going nowhere near a AJ. I totally agree with you there. AJ ends Hayes' career, but Belly might do it first. Belly wants to fight Fury, but don't want anything to do with anyone. Anyone. From WBSS. Well, you talk about kind of fight Usyk, but I'd like to see him fight Gassiev, actually. Absolute phony. Belly ends Hay's career. Hay wouldn't mind due to the payday. 
Uh, what's BWTN's view on the book Belly said about hey avoiding the Wilder fight and choosing to fight a fat cruiserweight and said after all the talk of wanting a world title but we're really just here for the clash. Uh, what do I make of it? Belly trying to get inside of Hay's head again. And knowing Hay and understanding Hay. Yeah, Hay wants to make as much money as possible. That's obvious. Uh, cash out fight against Joshua. So we're going to try and blow out Belly and then go for Joshua. Was that fight ever there? Who knows? Um, I was, this is what I was going to say. A fight with Huey Fury or jo Joseph Parker is more realistic than a Joshua fight. Well, why do you want to fight David Hay? Why? What for? I mean, you got beat by Tony Bellew. That is all just, you got beat by Tony Bellew. I, I don't care what you did, you got beat by Tony Bellew. And most boxing fans will go, yeah, you got beat by Tony Bellew. And they go, and what would Tony, what would Joshua do to Tony Bellew? That, that's how the logical, that's how the logical thing is. And like, you know, you can imagine promoter go, yeah, all right, he, he, he beat Tony Bellew, all right. But did he get beat by Tony Bellew? Really? And what would Joshua do to Tony Bellew? That's how they'll sell it. That's how they'll sell it. And then fight fans will go, yeah, the promoter's right. What would Joshua have done to Bellew? Yeah. David A's too old. He's past it. Why does Joshua want to fight him? Let's get the Wilder fight. Let's get Baby, Baby Miller. Let's fight Dillian White again. Yeah, oh, yeah, hey, he needs to fight somebody young, like somebody else who's ambitious and wants to fight. Yeah, let him fight Dillian White. Let him fight. I don't know, Kubrat Pulev, let him fight somebody else, but let him fight Povetkin. Yeah, hey, Povetkin's a great fight. Hey, Shannon Briggs, what happened to Shannon Briggs? So that's how I think that'll go, um, even if Hay wins. Uh, BW, at BW Tim, it spoke directly to me, though. What did I do? Did you type in caps? Yeah, that's what happens. It will, if you type in caps, the, uh, the bot will talk to you and tell you not to type in caps or not to swear. Watkins Akoli, big fight, love it, yeah. June the 6th, Lawrence Akoli, Luke Watkin. Um, do I have any proof? Yeah, I've got proof. Um, I'm not I'm not talking press conferences, by the way. When was the last time you had a matchroom fighter on the phone line chatting boxing like you do with regular people on this channel? I don't know. It's just, just that happened. It's not because it's not happened. Look, I think... I think I understand where you're coming from and I get your point. And um, I think I do need to answer this question. So it, 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 are you, let me, let me, let me get this straight. Are you asking me or are you suggesting? These are suggestions because on typing, you never quite tell what people are saying. Are you suggesting that I should be interviewing matchroom fighters? Are you suggesting that I should be doing press conferences? Or are you questioning why I don't do it? I don't quite get it because the way you're typing, I can't tell if you want me to do it because I am just one man. So, um, yeah. Once we once we expand, which we are going to expand and we've got more people on board, then I think you'll see the things that you want to see. That's as much as I can say about that to you. Why are you anti match room? Why aren't they why aren't they being in the room? Um I'm not sure if I'm anti matchroom, my friend. I think you are I've got a matchroom agenda, but I am not anti matchroom. Is boxing social Glenn McCrory? Yeah, Glenn's cool. Boxing, watching boxing sounds like Russ in disguise. Yeah, no, it's Glenn McCrory in room. Absolutely. I got a lot. Of, hey, listen, I got I got tons and tons and tons of respect for Glenn McCrory. I think he's a fantastic individual great man um we, we sat in a bar together and talked for a good few hours about different topics top man glenn mccrory top man meaning went out for the evening together and he is a top top man i've got nothing but praise for glenn mccrory great guy great guy and anybody who gets to work with glenn mccrory in terms of the boxing and commentary god he can tell you some stories and he's a great guy shout out to glenn mccrory glenn if you're watching love you man you're a top man um Belly needs to keep keep the pressure up and get his accuracy up. 
you're right, he misses a lot. Well, there you go. He needs to be active with the jab, which he doesn't do. There's my point. Uh, if he could jab, he could still be dangerous, but I don't think even Salas can reinvent Hay. I agree there. Uh, what exactly is Hay's issue? He never, he's never out of shape. He just seems like he, he likes that Samuel L. Jackson in that movie, Unbreakable. Um, because well, I mean, he puts everything into every shot, doesn't he? So when you, when you, when you're blowing your load, which he does, and he really puts everything into it, then uh, you know. It's almost like the old I mean, I can't think comes out and tries to bomb you out in the first couple of rounds. So, yeah, I guess, of course you're going to tire. And look at all them shots that he missed belly with, them big them big punches he was throwing like he was a... Like, the overhand right he was trying to catch belly with. He looked like he was... He looked like a cricket. He looked like a fast bowler trying to throw that overhand right. He looked clumsy. And all that extra weight he put on. Why? Uh... Miracle powder Cantonar's collar heard Tone say at the presser. Who's got the harder left hook? Belly or Gassiev? Gassiev. Belly is in it for the money as well as fighting no one at cruiserweight. Gassiev sparks some silly. What's your thoughts on uh Matchroom USA thing? Well, I spoke about it early on that that it seems Matchroom are gonna have um uh, they're gonna be promoting boxing a, a, a boxing uh card every month in the usa i think it's great for matchroom i think it's fantastic they're expanding the brand and with Heyman and his fighters it'll be very interesting to see whether they jump ship and end up being with eddie hearn or with matchroom so i can see it happening so yeah um Hey, got me into boxing. Some of his knockouts were amazing. Sad to see what has happened to him. Well, Hey is going to end up like the... Uh, if he doesn't get a boxing out like Roy Jones. When in their prime, dazzling hand speed. Well, I won't say they had. Hey had dazzling hand speed. He just had quick hands and uh, was able to land knockout blows. Um, but um, that was, he, just, he had quick hands. So for me, David Hay... Once his speed and reflexes are gone, forget it. Forget it. Keith hasn't carried anyone in six fights. Yeah, but look when the injury started with Keith Thurman. Check back. Um, boxing. Uh, let's see if they can push this down the page. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Sorry. I thought that was it. I thought nobody else was talking. Wow. Sorry, people. Any... Eddie's way of thinking, hey, too old for, for AJ. Uh, but Povetkin and Briggs are fine. We all know that AJ will fight L Lenroy Thomas a baby fight. choice. <laughs> That's a fight to talk about as well. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Coley will beat Luke, might get dropped, but he'll get win on points. Well, I think uh, for me, Luke Watkins has got to be careful of Coley's right hand. He does look... I like to look at fighters that are defensively responsible. I like Luke Watkins, but the two things that come to my mind, amateur pedigree, which you're seeing again, and defensive responsibilities. And I think, I think Luke Watkins, I'm concerned about his um, defense. Um, that is a big problem for me. I don't like his defense. I don't like the way his hands are low. I don't like the way that he's he's able to get caught over the top of a right hand. And he and against him like a Coley, that right hand's gonna be registering real early. So I'm 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 very concerned about that. Love to tie up. In answer to your question, yes, it would be great to see match from fighters on your channel in phone etc. I you say you're not anti matchroom but there's no content from them, only their opponents. Hmm. Okay. Well, if you're willing to come on board and join the team, then you can do the filming and you can film matchroom fighters. I'm not going to stop you. But, you know, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you're not aware of, and I know you're not aware of, but it's got nothing to do with... Uh, listen, I mean, okay... If I do what everyone else does, okay, who gets Abel Sanchez live where fans can sit down and talk to him? Look, 
Let's put it another way, Q. There's Matchroom. There's Top Rank. There's Golden Boy. There's a Box Nation and Frank Warren. There's uh, Sourland. There's so many different promoters in the world. Not everybody does things the same way. There's Coca-Cola. There's Pepsi. There's Purcell. There's Bold. They're all within the industry. So rather than say knock us for what we don't do how about looking at the things that we do do yeah think about the things we do do you know don't focus so much on negative about what we don't do focus on the positive and the things that we do do abel sanchez live um um bivel dimitri bivel live before he fights in his last fight against uh oh, sullivan barrera Carson Jones, live. We give, we, we bring the fans closer to boxers. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, we got a live show. We bring fighters on the channel. You know, I, I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think we're doing okay. With no backing, I think we're doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> but I get your point. Fast bowlers, haha, <laughs> that's jokes. It's true though. It's true, he's fighting punches like a fast bowler. I mean, big right hands weren't landing and getting caught all the time. It's but true, yeah. Uh, let's, let's go down the page again. Let's let me guess. Nothing for Hay Belly this week, 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 or nothing of the undercard fighters. Any interviews coming? Wow, whoa, you really put it on the beginning. You put some ego on, didn't you? Dang. <laughs> well, live commentary. How many channels do live commentary? Stay up at X amount of time in the morning and do live commentary. Talk to me. I, I, I'm not. I'm not hearing you. How many fighters come on live? Get live feeds from fighters. I'm not hearing you, man. <laughs> hey, had his chance to click. Uh, Cantonar's collars. Uh, watch boxing. Plenty others out there covering belly, and for the for the rest to death this week. What's what's he going to do then? Then ask the same questions. Coogan's official PR machine for Matchroom. Yes, we love the love the sit downs with Abel Sanchez, Bermain Stern, Peter Fury, etc. etc. The same faces do the same with Matchroom fighters on the phone. Right, T what? You get the Matchroom fighters. You get the telephone numbers. I'll do the interviews. Okay, how's that sound? Um. Keep doing your thing, man, bro. People don't appreciate how little one man can do. You're doing things that these critics are not. Thank you very much, bro. Ingram, that guy is getting you confused with his butler. Hello, hell. Watch, um, watching boxing says, you're in the UK, so show some UK content. If you're happy to commentate on fight night, then do the same on the phone with interviews. Okay, watching boxing. Let me, let me, let me get something. Let me clear something up for you because I know... I know you must be either new or you just got an agenda. Point number one. I've only just come back to the UK. Before that, I was in Ireland for three years. Okay. And before that, I was in the Caribbean for two years. And then before that, I was doing something else. I've come from a sport intermediate. Started since 2009. And I'm not just doing boxing, just for your information. I do news and entertainment. I don't know how many of those guys talked to Beyonce's manager or former manager. Destiny's Child involved with Destiny's Child. No. We do different media things, not just boxing. we now got a gaming channel as well. So expansion. So my friend, a book publishing company. So my friend, it's not just boxing. I've got, I, I'm carrying this boxing thing out because i got a passion for it. But that's not the direction of BWTM Sports. And once we get more people on board, you'll see that. But come on, interviewing Steve Redgrave. How many people interview Steve Redgrave? The legend that is Steve Redgrave. So look, help please everybody. And everybody wants something. Very few people want to do the work. So we're doing okay. We're doing fine. But I get your point. Um, it is true. Uh, being UK based should cover more matchroom as they are the majority of UK boxing. Can press them for tough questions and not be like the generic uh, uh, 
indistinguishable other channels. Be the regime, don't explain yourself to these guys. I think I should. The people can understand and get the point, you know, because you know, uh this is what listen, the channel, the channel BWTM, before it's BWTM was Bayloric. And you know, we were doing a lot of stuff in the community for young people, giving people opportunities in underprivileged backgrounds from underprivileged backgrounds. People that society turned their back on. We were going into those communities and doing stuff for that. So way before this media stuff. And do you know how this this whole media thing started? Because I was in the Caribbean. And when I was in the Caribbean, they said to me that for me to put on like uh, shows, I would have to do the, make the content and then put it on the channel and then pay them $850. So I decided to create this. So that's where we're at. So uh, my journey is very different to a lot of these other media outlets. Very, very different. Um, Robin Guerrero, you just, you just answered the question. Home will not allow his fighters to be asked tough questions. Nobody's saying you're rubbish or knocking your work. So don't get it twisted. Yes, expansion, you said it yourself. So expand into UK uh, matching fighters on the phone, build relationships. Will you enjoy your work and want the same with the matching fighters? That's it. Why just matching fighters? See, you, see you, you have an agenda. You're not saying UK fighters. You're saying matchroom. What about Liam Cameron? He's not matchroom. Come on. What about a senior byfield? He's not matchroom. What about Tommy Frank? He's not matchroom. Huh? What about um, all those fighters that came out of Steve Goodwin's camp? They're not matchroom. So yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get what you're talking about. I don't get you. I don't understand you. You just want me to focus on matchroom fighters. What, have you got an agenda? Do you just want matchroom fighters? Or not just boxers in general? For me, I don't care what stable they come out of. Don't care. So I don't get it. Uh, as Frank got a better roster than Hearn. Um, Liam Cameron, don't make me laugh. Free sports, nobody's. <sighs> Ouch. Well, I didn't say that, and I'm not going to say that. Uh, you have to say they're underrepresented on your channel. Seems like they're avoided. No, not undervoided, but hey, you know, you can't please everybody. And if you're prepared, to come from behind the keyboard and to actually do some work, then I'll take you a little bit more seriously. But at the moment, I can only assume you're on an agenda. So it is what it is. We're doing what we're doing and we, we like what we're doing and we're successful at what we're doing. So it's cool, it's cool. Um, so it is what it is. If I did matchroom all the time, then somebody said I didn't do box nation. If I did box nation all the time and matchroom, someone would complain and say, well, you should do something else. So it is what it is. It is where the channel is at the moment. And when it expands, it expands. So it is what it is. No big thing. No biggie. So back to Bellew versus Hay. Um, okay. So out of all the people that are covering these fights, let me ask you a question. How many of these people that you've got cameras up that are filming these people do three things break down a fight do live commentary do interviews do live shows live shows commentary uh interviews tell me how many do it and bring your international names on how many of these people have interviewed terence crawford keith thurman and all these guys before they were world champions. Uh, if you, Ingram, if you could have a chat with, on the phone with AJ or Bellew, we've had Bellew, not on this channel, we have interviewed Tony Bellew before, live, by the way, we interviewed Bellew live, uh, or Conor Ben, would you? Of, yes, of course you would. It's not just a simple. Uh, yes, of course you would. It's just not simple as you think. Keep doing your thinking. I will do. Um, look, Again, 
it's easy to say it's easy to say these things but you know what we're in our niche we do what we do and we're happy if you want more matchroom stuff go, go watch those channels that do matchroom stuff simple just do that enjoy it you know there's so many channels out there why do you have to come on our channel trying to make us like everybody else enjoy it enjoy your channel enjoy the channels there are other channels out there enjoy them if you want to watch match them all day fight us to do that enjoy it i'm not here to tell you not to do it but just enjoy it just enjoy it all right enjoy it but um you know i can only do so much with one pair of hands so um there are things we need to focus on like this weekend Gennady Golovkin comes back. Uh, he fights whew, against a guy who's a light middleweight moving up to middleweight. If Golovkin doesn't knock this guy out, it's not going to look good. Hey would be a good interview. Yeah, Hey would be a good interview, actually. Cool. Uh, we're investing in you, Ingram, not the fighters. Only means anything to us if you're the one interviewing them. Ah, that's interesting. I'm actually sticking up for you here, Ingram. I'm actually saying access to certain fighters isn't just a click of fingers. Apologies for the confusion. Oh, no, I'm not saying, I, look, I understand. I'm not knocking anybody, right? The point is, we don't just want the size sports content from matchroom fighters. We want your work towards matchroom fighters when they actually have to talk and speak for once. <laughs> Oh, mm. Mm. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Point taken. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. That's what you want. And we'll see what we can do. But, uh, yeah. So, um, Golovkin fights this weekend. I feel sorry for Golovkin in a sense because Vilas hasn't fought in two years. I know. If yeah, this is the thing. Guys have fought in two years. If Golovkin knocks him out in a couple of rounds, people say, yeah, well, Vilas hasn't been knocked out before by anybody. But look, Vilas ain't fought for two years. But if Vilas goes 12 rounds against Golovkin, it's a disaster either way. They should have fought Spike or Sullivan, but Hey, that would have been that that would have been better, only in the sense that Spike has been more fought more regularly and it's a paycheck for Spike, but I didn't want the Spike fight, but I'd rather see see it. It's all of course it's all stacked against him. Of course it's all stacked against him. But um what what is perturbing for me is that that's gonna be a, a, a record title defense against a guy who hasn't fought in two years and a light middleweight. Um uh, and while we're all being honest, I'm sick to death of matching fighters. And that's the that's the that that's why this place is unique and refreshing and great at the same time. Ouch. Um mm. 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 look. Well, this is the way I see it, and I'll I'll be I'll be quite frank and honest with you. Um there are plans in place to expand. That's the first thing. So there are plans to expand and get more people on board. One, two, um, it is important that we have a phone in. So that's the second thing we'll have on the channel. So we're always expanding to exp uh, phone in, so people can phone in and talk. I said it for a long time. And uh, a show, a regular show that people can tune into every week at a certain time. So if we say to you, we're on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 p.m., you know we're going to be here. That's the sort of schedule I want in place. Um, that's the sort of schedule I want in place for BWTA. Yes, there could always be more content. Of course, there could be more content. But I tell you, today, I saw you today. What well, behind the scenes? By the way, while you sitting here saying this, I was trying to get, well, still working and still got to make a call uh, to get an interview of Cecilia Bracus or Bracus, the undisputed women's champion of the world wanting that interview for years that we're moving closer to making it happen so that's what i've been working on behind the scenes to get that interview um because it's uh she's with uh, uh, riker lucia riker so we're working on that as well 
Um, who have who would have thought who would have thought post Stevens and brutal knockout loss that Belly would feature in three pay per view fights only with Matchroom? Well, anything's possible with Matchroom. Uh, so what you're saying for this week? Any calls for jo to Joyce or Jamie Cox Ryder? You got Lewison on the Joyce fight. I did, I did, but it's. Uh... <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> You'll have live audio commentary for the fight, okay? That's what you'll get. Would you be up for some cross channel collaboration like getting on boxing gossips? Well, stop, 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 stop. Now, I need to educate you lot now. When you talk about cross collaboration, have you looked at our channel? We've collabed with some of the biggest channels, period. And this is, look, you need to go and look at BWTM News. That was where the boxing channel originated. You need to go and look at that content. A lot of you newbies that are coming on talking stuff here, I know you newbies because you've not looked at the history of the sport from what we've done. You need to go back and look. Go back, BWTM News and Entertainment. Go back at that channel and it's got packed of loads of interviews of fighters, collaborations crossovers we were collaborating with atg radio that was the biggest boxing radio station that was on at the time um and so many other channels we've collaborated with boxing gossip we've collaborated with before and that was before people were even watching got boxing gossip come on man behave yourselves uh we like and appreciate your work ingram who else had then the current IBF champion on the phone after Grows You Bank fight. If people don't appreciate it, it's there and ridiculous. You're not for up for matchroom content on your channel because of the gossiping situation and your hate for Eddie. That's how it seems to you. To you who has no real name, to you who says watching boxing, to you who is a no face, to you who has an opinion. But we all have an opinion. And you're entitled to your opinion. It doesn't make it right. And it certainly doesn't make it the truth. It's just an opinion from somebody who hasn't even got their real name up there. And you want me to take you seriously? I mean, come on, man. Come, seriously? Come on, man. Just use your real name. And if you really want to say something to me about how you think the channel should move forward in a... Because you seem to be stuck on this gospel thing. Really stuck on it. Yeah, you know, really stuck in it. Like if... You know, like you're trying to make a point. I understand what your point is. So if, you, if you've if you got nothing constructive to say, because some of you, what you're saying is cool, but some of it is yeah, agenda-based. And hey, man, you know what? Is what it is. Your opinion is your opinion. <sighs> so nothing about hating, but how do I know you're not a troll? How do I know you're not employed by other people say certain things who knows who cares and what is your what, i mean you know you an opinion just an opinion i think watching boxing is as store as your stalker i think we all have biases it is what it is i know i know well you know i'm not up for the much room content i sat down and did it interview eddie hearn if i wasn't up for match room content then I wouldn't have got an interview Eddie Hearn, would I? Would I? And sat down and interviewed him. I wouldn't, would I? Ah, <sighs> dear. Dear, dear me. Do yourself a favor, mate. Right? Go and look at all of our content on our other channel that's got about 8,000 subscribers. Go over there and have a look at the content when we started back in 2009 and come back and talk to me. We've got in 10 years. Almost 10 years. <sighs> Ingram, anyway, Ingram, who wins Saturday? Certainly not the boxing fans. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because if Bellew, Hey Bellew 2 is better than Hey Bellew 1, and it's a real drawn-out fight, and both guys get knocked down, and it's a scramble, and if we get a fight like that, then it's a fight for the ages, and people will say, yeah, I was entertained. You've got um, Joyce fighting Lenroy Thomas. I think that's a good fight. 
because well, Dave Allen couldn't beat him in two fights, uh, regardless of how it happened. Um, you know that Joyce is going to come in in shape. He's had four fights. He's fighting Lenroy Thomas. I think it's a good fight. You've got Paul Butler fighting an unbeaten uh, champion. I think that's a good fight as well. So I, I don't think it's bad. I think you've got Jamie Cox against um, John Ryder. That's another good fight. I think there's some good fights. Some really good fights on the night. And I don't think it's that bad. And then you've got Golovkin. You've got uh, a fantastic to see. Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Cecilia Brackers. Head, I think she's headline. If she's not headlining, then she's then a co-main event with Golovkin. I think that's fantastic as well. So there's some real good boxing going on the weekend. I don't think it's that bad. You know, I think it, I've seen worse cards. Uh, you was up for it before the nonsense started. Since then, you're as hardly nothing. I don't blame you if you hate them for doing what they did to you. Doing what? Wait, mate. I, I, mate, I, you really seem to be affected by this more than I am. You really seem affected by it. You seem affected by gossip. You seem affected by Hearn. You seem affected by Matchroom. And I don't hear you talk about Box Nation. And that's where I'd love to have been today. I was sitting down here and thinking to myself, shit, I'd love to be in Box Nation today. Tyson Fury was there. Hora Davis was there. Billy uh, Joe Saunders was there. Um, um, what's his name was there? Uh, Yard was there. Oh, by the way, hold on a second. Let me track back a second. Uh, Yard, uh, Anthony Yardy was there. Um, who else was there? Um, it was quite... Uh, uh, Carl Frampton was there. Today... Would have been a great day to have been at, at Box Nation. An absolutely fantastic day would have been today. They had so many um, fighters there, well-named, established names at Box Nation. They've got a nice, tasty little stable there of good fighters. I would love to be there today, but it is what it is. So, um, if Belly, Belly gets caught us boxing would be in a better place uh plus if i was a paid match from troll i wouldn't be telling you to get the truth out of them on your channel in place where they should have to speak up for once rather than be protected on sky uh, you know it's it's not as easy as it may seem um to get certain interviews of certain fighters because certain fighters are protected for a reason let's make that very clear as well and let me tell you something. I've had, I think, I'm going to make a statement that might be controversial, but then it might just be me. I found it far more, I find it easier to get to do interviews with um, with fighters in America. I don't know. Maybe it's because of my connections to America. I don't know. But I seem to get in there and, and have interviews and, and have the connections a lot easier. And, uh, you know, is what it is. It is what it is. Um, big, big Ross troll account. Ross sat with a big bad white stuff and troll overdrive. Get a horror on the channel. Yeah, a horror. The horror is a guy I'd like to talk to. Definitely. Fellow Hackney boy, I'd like to talk to him. These things are going to happen. These things are going to happen. And when they happen, they will happen. I'm sure they'll happen. But just chill. Be patient. Be patient. Channels getting upgrades happening. Be patient. We're moving into our studio soon. Be patient. We're going to get new people on the channel. We're going to have more people on the channel. Be patient. We're going to have a, a, a talk. We'll have a regular talk show. Be patient. We're going to have a phone in. Be patient. Just be patient, please. Listen, you're getting live commentary. You're getting people coming, coming to the channel. You're getting me phoning up people and, and getting people on the channel. Come on, just... Be patient, please, for heaven's sake. How about, you know, I know you guys want good content. I know you want interviews. I know you want someone steamrolling there and asking questions and stuff. Great. You know, um, see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. So these are all good things that are happening. BWTM in the studio, having its own studio, you know, but once that happens, why do we have to go to press conferences? Just saying, why do we need to go to press conferences? Just wait. 
We don't follow, we lead. We don't follow, we lead. All right? So we don't follow. Just relax and cool, chill. All right? Um, let me think. Is there anything else I need to talk about? It's almost 5 to 12 now. And uh, be patient for nine years, but feel like BW team is on the verge of blowing up. Blowing up? Blowing up, blowing up. What do you mean? That's a good thing or a bad thing? Remember, just... Just, just hold on. Just, just picture this for a second. A show three times a week on the channel, bringing breaking news from around the world, and you don't have to sit in a press conference and watch press conferences. The fighters are right in front of you. Imagine that. And not just boxers, people from different sports. You know, the, the time we have to engage and get with sports agents and all sorts of stuff as well. So you know, you're building ties with. Not just boxing, basketball, football, rugby, cricket. All that stuff needs to do. It just doesn't happen like that. You've got to build all those relationships. You've got to network for those things to happen. Plus, you move into a studio. Plus, you're trying to get new staff on. Man, it's a hell of a lot of stuff that's going on. And this is just one channel. You, Some of you guys have a clue. You've got this channel here. You've got the news channel. You've got the gaming channel. That's on the verge of getting an affiliation there. You've got the news channel that's going close to 10,000 views of 10,000 10, subscribers. We don't do much work. We want to be doing red carpet events there. I mean, films, movies, TV. Man, you imagine three, six people on board of BWTN. Imagine just what could happen. Just imagine your phone ins. I want to do a talk show, nothing to do with sports, so people can ring in and talk about the problems and issues. I want to do a live talk show outside of this in the area that I live. So there's so much going on. You know, I'd also like to be able to do an evening where, like, sit down in the evening, have mates around, and we all sit down and watch the boxing together, and then you can see our reactions live to the boxing. And, and talking round by round as the fight's going on. That's stuff I want to give you. I really want to bring that stuff to you. So there's lots of stuff going on. And, you know, we'll do it, and then, then someone else will come along and copy it. You know how it goes. So it is what it is. Uh, nothing worse when you pay for a pay-per-view fight, and then they cuddle at the end, feel cheated. <laughs> no, I think what pees me off. It's when they touch gloves every round. They're touching gloves every round like it's a sparring session. Should be banned. Uh, what's next? AJ versus Price on pay-per-view because he's, let's face it, and David beat Povetkin, it would have been next. It's like WWF, whatever they call it. <laughs> That's terrible. But it's true. I understand. I get you. I understand. I feel you. I feel you. Right. So I think that's about it from now for me. Unless there's something else I need to talk about. Thank you all so much. I do take in what you say. I don't take it as criticism. Um, but please. For, you know, expansion is a good thing. And people always have their criticism and have their, 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 their knocks and, you know, you know, at the end of the day, we keep moving, we keep focused, we keep, we keep. As a very famous woman once said, and still I rise, we keep going regardless. Uh, you heard, but yeah, I did hear. Are you going to be doing a show on Ryder versus Cox Ingram? Um, you think I should? Hold on. What? Isn't Ryder versus Cox on the same night of Hay versus Bellew? Because that's what I'm going to do live. Yeah, I heard about uh, Canelo's follicle here. And and, and Povetkin winning a ruling over Wilder. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that. I heard about both of those, those stories. Yeah, but Canelo's done. Canelo's done. And I mean it like, no matter what Canelo does from this point onwards, his career is tarnished because everyone's going to think, you're a cheat. Once that sticks on you, there's always that 
Yeah, well, yeah, he good fighter, but yeah, not sure. Because Vivekan didn't officially fail the test. <sighs> well, what the hell did he, what the hell did he do when he was fighting Stavard? And he that was meant to fight Stavard, he pulled out. And how the hell did he was able to fight knock out two uppers the way he did? Oh man, that sorry. Right, I'm out of here. Have a great evening. Thank you all so much. We'll be back possibly on Saturday night for Hay versus W2. We'll do live commentary on that. Yeah. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And we'll see you soon. Good night.